my gosh. Oh, she's dumping coal, boys. Holy sh**. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Six Shooter TV. My name is Tyler, and today I'm going to be working on my 2002 Dodge Cummins. Uh, it's 24 valve, extended cab, long bed, 125,000-ish uh, miles, so pretty low miles for the year. Today what I'm going to be doing is installing the Quadzilla Power Truck Tuner, and this is a full-on, like, Custom tuner adds crazy amounts of horsepower if you'd like to. Uh, the benefit to this over any other tuner that's on the market, in my opinion, is that you can actually do custom tunes on this or load custom tunes built by others. Uh, so for example, for people with uh, different injectors or bigger turbo or other modifications done to their truck, uh, this tuner will be able to uh, get the most out of your setup. Uh, versus again other brands that are just kind of plug and play where you have you know a few different modes This does have that feature, but it also goes way above and beyond and in my eyes This is hands down the best truck tuner for your 24 valve Cummins And I've done tons of research. I've been thinking about doing a, a tuner like this on my truck for about a year and uh, Quadzilla power was definitely the the way to go on this one uh, I did get the iQuad version, so it communicates with any of my iOS devices, and that's going to be like my iPhone or an iPad. And in this video, you're going to see me set it up with my iPad. And my goal was, the reason I want to run an iPad is so I can run split screen, so I can run uh, the gauges on one side of the iPad, and then on the other side, run my music that uh, just plays throughout my truck. So it'll kind of be like my new center console, which is really rad. Uh, so that's the, that's the goal. Uh, in this video, you're going to see me do the install and setup. So other than that, a uh, huge shout out to Quadzilla Power and especially Marco down there. Uh, if you guys have any questions or concerns, give them a call. With that being said, uh, Marco is very intelligent when it comes to these trucks and knows a lot. And I'm sure that I will be making a phone call once I get this installed to get my custom tune set up on this uh, on my truck. So uh, other than that, Let's get into it. All right, so I ended up getting a table set up, get all my stuff set out. Just makes it a little easier, workspace cleaner. Uh, one cool thing is in the required tools in the manual, it shows everything. Uh, so I'll just go over it with you now. All right, so step one in the instruction manual is disconnect both batteries. And to disconnect the batteries, it's just your uh, half inch wrench that they had you get. All right, next thing is installing the iQuad module and then also the adrenaline unit itself. Um, Quadzilla recommends that you install it to the top of your fuse cover so I just took that off and we're just going to wipe it down with some alcohol here and then in there they have the 3M uh, velcro so we'll get that installed. There is a serial number on the back of my uh, iQuad Wi-Fi unit and uh, I did make sure not to cover that up with the velcro just in case if that is important someday. I am gonna hold off on installing the iQuad unit. Uh, I, my guess is I'll probably install it like right back here. Uh, the reason I'm gonna hold off though is this pigtail, uh, I don't know where it goes yet. So with that being said, I just don't wanna install it somewhere and then have to redo it. So we'll just hold off on doing that. The next uh, instructions here in the instruction book would be the step three oil temp installation uh, or uh, the number four transmission temp installation. So they send you, Quadzilla sends you one uh, temperature sending right here, which is uh, you can be for either the transmission or your oil temp. Now, of course, if it's transmission, it's automatics only. So in the instructions, it says you need to route the wire. I'm going to do that second. Uh, I'm going to get the actual sensor installed first. All right. Sorry about the lighting here, but we did find it. So here's the bottom of my transmission pan and there's the bolt right there. So I'll go ahead and get that removed. So uh, before you go crawling, in and out of your truck a million times or underneath it just to let you know the size of the bolt is the 11 millimeter that they supplied uh, I the sensor size is uh, the half inch wrench before I get that pulled out too they said to wrap the transmission temperature probe with a tiny amount of Teflon tape 
to be sure it seals. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. All right, in the instruction manual too, it said uh, to not over wrap it uh, because it could throw off the actual reading. So I went around uh, probably between 1.75 and two times. Uh, the other thing they said not to do with this is over tighten it because you can break the sensor itself. And then obviously it won't read properly. And there's the transmission temp sensor all installed. All right, one thing I did want to talk about on the uh, trans temp is make sure the fiber washer is between the ring terminal and the sensor. So the fiber washer needs to be between the ring terminal that you install and the sensor itself. So I'm assuming that prevents uh, maybe a correct temperature reading or maybe a shortage. Next up is removing these three 13 millimeter bolts uh, above the throttle position sensor of TPS. And that removes this housing, I believe. There's a wire in there. And it's the one that's on the top and closest to the engine block. You can see this one, uh, they're both the same color, which it would be nice if Chrysler from the factory, if they would have made them different colors, that way it'd be easier. But, cause this obviously is kind of a scary task, but it's the top one closest to the engine block. So you can see it'd be the inside one right there on the right side. I don't know if you guys can see that. Hopefully you can, but I'll get the tap on there and then show you guys again. From the wiring harness here for the adrenaline, uh, you got the wire, it's uh, all sheeted, which is nice, going right into the VP44. So now we are going to go ahead and put the uh, TPS with throttle position sensor back on. Okay, the next step is to locate the data link sensor. And they said it's a flat three connector. So I'm assuming it's that one. And red, light blue, and dark blue. So that is gonna plug in right there all the wires seem to be matching up i don't know if you guys can even see this oh, wow great connection in there and the wires are in the corresponding spots the next step it says to connect the ground wire to the negative battery terminal so this is going to be my negative battery terminal and i uh, got the ground wire it's already has the uh, connector on it for you and if you look at that, it's the perfect size, which is amazing. All right, so the next step is going to be uh, step nine. Let's go ahead and feed that red and white wire through the grommet and then go into the truck and get it connected into the fuse panel. So on my truck, I found that it would probably be easiest just to use the transmission clutch spot. And this is something that's not in the manual, but it's a hack that I know. So I'm just gonna uh, take a long screwdriver. So you can see that screwdriver, it's going through the clutch master cylinder grommet. Uh, I shoved this screwdriver all the way in. This is just a super long screwdriver. You're gonna see it's gonna come out right here. That's the screwdriver. Let's see if we can get some light on that, perfect. So that's the screwdriver right there. And then with that, grab your electrical tape. Make sure this wire is not wrapped up or anything. And tape it to the screwdriver. One note when taping it, don't just tape the head to the screwdriver itself, because when you pull it through, uh, you could bend or damage that prong. Um, so it's easier to uh, like wrap it around itself like that and then tape the loop part to the screwdriver. So I went up and fished it out and then you can see it's coming right through to here. So now we're just gonna go ahead and get it plugged into the fuse. All right, so we're going to fuse number nine and they said to the top one. All right, got the fuse tap installed on the fuse itself right there hope you guys can see that now that the fuse tap is installed right there on number nine see if you guys can see that you just plug this wire in and again it's on the top so the next step is connecting the positive terminal uh, i'm sorry positive uh cable for the adrenaline to the terminal the battery terminal again you're doing this all while the truck uh battery terminals are disconnected my positive is still on because my ground ground is off, of course. So didn't want you guys to think that I was doing the opposite here. All right, so we got the adrenaline plugged in, the batteries reconnected, and we're at the point now where we need to install the EGD probe. So 
with that, uh, I did actually just slightly pre-drill the exhaust manifold and I didn't go all the way through because you do need to have your truck running for this so then it blows out any of the shavings. So we'll go nice and slow with that. Uh, keep in mind you're gonna have quite a few um, sensors unplugged. I got two more down here. I think one of them's for fuel pressure and I know one's for EGTs. I'm not sure what the last one's for. It might be for uh, the map sensor on a different unit. I'm not exactly sure, but we'll find out. Uh, other than that, everything's all hooked up, so let's go ahead and start it up. All right, we got it started here. Uh, keys on, wait to start light is off. And... Looks good, running. Only light on on the dash is my seatbelt light. I don't know if you guys can see that because there's a pretty bad glare, but no lights on on the dash. So let's go ahead and start drilling. So I uh, just got finished drilling and tapping, which you guys saw. Uh, I started threading in the EGT probe. Um, I, at some point I might need to start the truck back up and re-tap a little bit. The instructions say to not tap it all the way because you could risk uh, making the hole for uh, the EGT probe too large. So I just went uh, till I felt the threads were most of the way in, but not all the way. So we're gonna go ahead and just finish uh, getting that installed. So it is now time to connect our iQuad unit to our actual iOS device. In this case, I'm gonna connect it to my phone. So you can see I got the iQuad app right there in the upper right of my screen, and it's gonna open up. Now, sometimes it opens up on a different screen. In this case, um, it just opened up on that speedometer. So we're gonna click on the settings button and vehicle setup, because we have not done that yet. And this is the part where you cannot connect to your uh, the truck first you need to stay on like some sort of data connection or wi-fi um, i'm going to scroll down to my v2 dodge 98 to 2002 so that's my truck um, if you hit okay that's good so that will uh, download it and get it set up and then from there now we can go ahead and connect it to our truck so my key is on so now that I got to connect to my Wi-Fi, it says initializing settings, setting custom variables, so it's all set there. So I believe I have the yellow triangle down there because I do not have my fuel pressure hooked up yet. So we'll just uh, put a few things up here just for now. Um, let's see, I think this is, yeah, we'll put the transmission temp up there. Oops. Um, this is coolant. It's a nice cold morning out, RPM. So that's good for now. And then I'm gonna go ahead and fire my truck up. You can see everything's reading there properly. Sorry if the audio is a little bit rough, but you can see I have my coolant, my EGTs, uh, my transmission temp, my RPM, and then once I start moving, my speed will then register. Uh, I can set up multiple different screens on this case. Um, but got everything all set up. And uh, other than that, I think that that's it. Now you can, of course, let your truck warm up because it's a nice, cool morning out when I'm shooting this. And with that being said, then uh, take it for a drive and test out your different tune levels. Okay, so I just wanted to show you guys the final install. Um, the only thing that I am missing, which I just have tucked down here at the moment, is the fuel. Uh, pressure sending again. This is the final install. So I just kind of zip tied some of these wires out of the way zip tied uh, all the Harness wires and the EGT probe and trans temperature wires up above so they're not going to get burned on anything Just tucked a few other wires down. So for the most part, it's clean um, other than that uh, It's time to go for a drive. So hit the road uh, all the gauges are working properly I have not stepped on it yet somehow uh, I've restrained from it, but I also want to get the truck fully warmed up before I did. Uh, so 
Um, right now I am at 188 coolant temperature, so we are definitely high enough. I'm gonna gap this car a little bit, give her some room. And I'm going 30, and I'm just gonna show you guys my reaction because I think that's gonna be better than seeing the gauges. So here we go. Roll into it a little bit. Oh my gosh. Oh, she's dumping coal, boys. Holy shit. Oh my gosh, excuse my language. This woke the truck up. Oh my goodness. My Cummins was sleeping until this thing. Unbelievable. I knew there was power in these things, but you don't know how much power until you put a tuner on. I don't know, I mean, but, but dyno, it feels like a lot. We're gonna step on it again. And we're gone. Oh my gosh. Holy smokes. Wow, my EGT's got up to 1300 right there. Boys, this is something else here. I am stoked on this one. So there you have it. I'm gonna show you guys, I'm gonna make a couple more videos on this, so don't think this is the last one. You'll probably see another one next week or something. Um, with that being said, go down in the link description, or click on the link in the description, and there's gonna be a, probably a button or something that says buy now, and get that thing. It'll get shipped to your house ASAP, and you guys, are gonna wake your 24 valve Cummins up. Thanks to Quadzilla Adrenaline. Huge shout out to those guys, thank you so much. They actually uh, are sponsoring this video, so I really appreciate them. And uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments below. Thumbs up this video for Quadzilla Adrenaline. And last but not least, hit subscribe. So, and then last, last but not least, click that link in the description for the to order your Quadzilla. So, thanks for watching, guys.